Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma bada habita fillah. A question was asked from one of our brothers in London. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us and preserve him. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. And bless us all to make wise guided decisions and choices that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al-nafi rizkin tayyib wa amin al-mutaqabilin. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with the bad Allah sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. The brother asks, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah honor you. I'd appreciate your advice on the best path for me to seek knowledge given my circumstances. Currently 21 years old. Graduate medical school in the UK at late 23-24, inshallah. Specialized by 29. Paid job for five years to specialize. I plan to specialize as a general doctor who can work literally any hours and days I want to after specializing and good pay. So I can give dawah. But until five years, uh, it's a nine to five job. Currently memorizing Quran and learning Arabic, alhamdulillah. Is it better for me to apply for Islamic University and go abroad to seek at 29, uh, at 29, it'll be more financially stable. Or do I have to go at 23, 24? The issue is main, uh, <clears throat> I may not be financially equipped at that stage. What are your general views on the circumstances? Where's my best potential, etc.? How can I help the Ummah the most? Uh, advise me, inshallah. Please, if you have time, could you comment also on marriage and when would be a good time, in your opinion, for that, given the above options? Uh, so, it, it being a long question, ultimately, in a lot of these, uh, these um, decisions, that these are decisions that a person has to make his or herself and determine what his or her priorities are. There's no doubt that seeking ilm, ilm al nafi which is the ilm al shara knowledge of the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the highest form of knowledge and the best and a way, one of the best qurbat that you can do to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is one of the best ways to come closer to Allah azza wa jal because you are learning fiqh fi deen, you are learning that which will benefit you in this life as well as the hereafter. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man bihi khayran din. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them fiqh fi deen, understanding of the religion. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man salaka tariqan bihi ilman tariqan Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path to Jannah. So, as we've said countless times, talib al ilm talib al jannah, kama qala salaf. The Salaf used to say that seeking knowledge is seeking paradise. So this shows us that this is something alim. This is something great and immense to go on the path of knowledge. It sounds to me that you have a pretty strong path already mapped out for yourself. And the khair is you are doing talib al-ilm. You are seeking knowledge by um, doing your, your learning Arabic and Quran. Walhamdulillah. Wa hadha ni'ma min ni'amillah. So, I would say it's going to come down to, of course, to really seek knowledge. And if you want to get into uh, Islamic University, for example, in Saudi Arabia, there are age limits. And the age limits are basically 25 years old. So, you will not have those same opportunities in general to seek knowledge as you would if you were to go at, the, at, at a younger age. So, that's one thing to consider. Uh, as far as what you must do and so on and so forth, those are things, again, as I said, those are decisions that you will have to uh, come to terms with. However, if you want to help the ummah in the best way, we need people who seek knowledge, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, practice what they preach, kama qala imam or bawwada, Imam 
Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala bab al-ilm qabla al wal-amal Imam Bukhari entitled a chapter in Sahih al-Bukhari entitled the chapter of uh, knowledge precedes uh, statements and actions because if we look at what goes on in the world especially with social media and now that everybody has open platforms and everybody has something to say and everybody has advice to give and everybody has fatawa <clears throat> then you find so many people speaking about the religion in the strangest of ways and with new types of ideologies and new types of ideas that have no authority from Allah Azza wa Jal. They have no relationship, no relation to Islam. So it shows us that we have a great need for Islamic knowledge and we have a great need for more du'at al-khair, du'at al-sunnah. We have more need uh, and a great need for more people to gain knowledge, practice that knowledge, preach that knowledge, and be patient on that path. We need that. There's not, it's never, we're, we're not crowded in the UK. We're not crowded in Switzerland. We're not crowded in Sweden. We're not crowded in Germany or in the US. We have plenty of space for people to call to the book and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in an immense duty. And there are very few from amongst them who are practicing like they should. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala forgive us all of our shortcomings. So that's something to consider that if you have the determination to seek uh, knowledge, to go on that steep path, because it's a steep path. It's not easy to seek knowledge. It's not just going, getting some books and so forth. And especially if you really want to seek knowledge, you need to be striving to reform yourself, which many of us didn't know that. And many of us didn't do that. So we memorized or they sought knowledge or what have you. But really inside they were some the same and sometimes they became worse. Some of the criminal acts, unfortunately, that some brothers and perhaps sisters have fallen into, uh, even though they Allah favored them with something of knowledge and to be able to sit with ulama is uh, a shameful thing and it is very unfortunate. And this is not time, I'm not using this time to attack the people of khair and the people of Sunnah, and the people who are trying to call to the book in the Sunnah. But I also want to highlight the point, the importance of practicing, and that more knowledge you get, the more responsible you are. That more and, pe more, and more people are going to be criticizing, looking at you, and expecting from you. And so it is a responsibility. So it's very important to consider all of those things when seeking knowledge and when delivering that knowledge to others so this is something alim and it's something it's a beautiful and righteous path and it's the path to jannah that's why it's not an easy path it's not easy just even to go that to sit in halakat and sit with the ulama those things aren't really easy to do your time most of the brothers that i know many of the brothers i know who traverse that path and i'm not trying to discourage you i'm just trying to give you some insight you know i was for example when I lived in Medina, and that was one of the one of the high points for me in trying to seek knowledge. I was very, I wasn't taking care of my my health. I was never a fat person, but <clears throat> but you know it takes its toll. You know, just eating sandwiches here and doing this and whatever you can. Fasulia, ask the brothers who lived in Yemen and stuff. They can really give you or Mauritania and other places who struggled to seek knowledge. So it's not it's a steep path. It's a path of patience. Then. All the other things that come with it, with family and with finances and other things. So it's a steep path and it's a righteous path and it's a recommended path to traverse. Uh, so I would say those kind of things you're going to need to sit, discuss that with your family. Of course, a lot of families want to prohibit it. You're going to have to discuss that with your heart. What do you really desire because yes you can postpone seeking knowledge and that path is always going to be open one form or another as a doctor you'll be able to employ yourself be in law or have an independent practice around the world with those skills you will be independent and you can make a lot of money and you can take time off and you can travel and you can seek knowledge and you can do many things so those are uh things to consider as well uh the final thing that you asked about regarding marriage again those ahkam depends upon a person's situation. 
So if you can remain patient and it's not an issue for you not being married at your age now and you can finish a certain degree of your studies, then perhaps that may be better for you to not disrupt your studies and have to deal with a family and those responsibilities. However, if that becomes a great fitna for you and you're struggling, you're struggling to remain halal and struggling to, to protect yourself from the haramat, then uh, under those circumstances, it may become either recommended or it may become wajib for you to uh, seek out a spouse, especially if you have the ability to financially uh, take care of one and you have the physical prowess as well. As the Prophet والسلام, said, Ya ma'ashara shabab, min istata'a minkum alba'a filiyatazawaj. O youth, those amongst you who are able to marry, then marry. He should marry. And then the Prophet والسلام, mentioned the other things like fasting and so on in order to protect one's shahwat if they are unable to do so. And the scholars differ about alba'a, the, the ability could be the ability, some say it's the ability financially, some say it's the b ability physically, meaning that you physically can perform and uh, strive to please a woman, please a, a spouse. So those are all things to consider, and I hope that that gives you some insight, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with a wise guided decision that would be best for you, and your goals and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with kulluma yuhibbuhu wa yarda. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with all those things which please him and that he loves. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.